You wouldn't be able to see it from above the ground, but the gardens feature nearly 100 chambers, passageways, courtyards, and patios dug beneath the hard pan soil, offering visitors a chance to take a subterranean journey to the Mediterranean in the middle of California. Super excited. We can't wait to welcome everybody back, um, safely of course. Yeah, and this is just really a 40-year labor of love like, like you mentioned, right? So just walk me through the history of this place. How was this built in the first place? So our builder, Baldessar Forestier, um, he's a Sicilian immigrant. He came to America having that American dream. He was familiar with citrus because his father back in Sicily had a citrus empire. Uh, and Baldessar wanted to have that same kind of success, but he wanted to do it over here in the States. So um, he came to America, started out in Boston, but soon realized that back east, there's not a lot of citrus growing. It's a little bit too cold and wet. So he came to California, uh, found Fresno, and bought himself 80 acres uh, for $80, so not a bad deal. But once Baldassar started digging, his dreams were shattered once he found out that the ground beneath him was solid hard pan soil, not suitable for citrus trees. And the obstacles didn't stop there. Soon he experienced record-breaking heat of 115 degrees for 7 to 10 days straight. That's when he came up with the idea to dig a little underground room to escape the heat. And it was that idea that led him to spend the next 40 years of his life carving out the useless farmland he had purchased into a habitable underground oasis adorned with luscious fruit trees and grapevines that he planted underground. Yeah, and we're talking about more than 100 years ago, right? And it's amazing that he came here, set out to do this as part of his uh, American dream, right? And Absolutely. And this is what it has become today. He started in 1906, so we are, um, you know, we're at 114 years now, so. Yeah. And just talking about the architecture of this place, uh, what was the inspiration? I know he came from Sicily, right? So was this part of the inspiration from the catacombs there? He definitely was inspired by the catacombs, wine cellars back in Sicily. Um, also, when he was in Boston, he was digging out subway tunnels and working on aqueducts. So he was getting very familiar with the concept of when you're underground, you're going to see big temperature differences. We usually see about 10 to 12 degrees difference on just our tour route, and we're only about 10 to 12 feet underground. Um, so having that knowledge did inspire him to create not only us being underground, but the arches that he was using for stability and um, the way that he was tunneling even was inspired by that. Then Forestier had an idea. Could he get a tree to grow underground? He began to experiment. He built a planter from the hard pan chunks he dug out and filled it with reconditioned soil. A skylight was cut at the top of the experimental room and he planted a tree. He found that with just the right amount of sunlight, water, and care, his citrus tree would not only flourish, but also be protected from the frost. And he did have orchards up top. There is good soil in the ground, so he would take out some of that dirt and then add it up to his orchards, you know, to give himself a nice, nice good topsoil. Um, but our trees that we have down here, most of them are originals and they're over 100 years old, which for citrus, normally they only live to be about 40 years, so we've more than doubled that lifespan. And even though the pandemic forced the garden to shut its doors for a short period of time, it was a blessing in disguise because it attracted more locals to come out and see this attraction in our own backyard. The pandemic definitely brought more local people out to see us, which is awesome. Uh, years before, we were always getting guests from all over the world. You know, they're coming to the zoo of 70 to Sequoia National Park, so you Google things to do in Fresno and it's us in the zoo. So, you know, we were always getting out of state travelers, not so much California or even Central Valley traffic, but with people not being able to travel so much last year, we saw a lot more of our locals coming out, which was really nice because right. it's got that it's in the backyard kind of aspect where yeah. people don't always think, you know, oh, well, it's Saturday, I'm going to go out to the gardens. So I can do that anytime. Yeah. But not being able to travel really increased our local traffic, which was really cool. Especially during the summertime, right? Because it's so hot and this is just a place to escape the heat. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, 10 degrees, if it's over 100, it's still hot, but that 10 degree difference does make a big difference. Yeah. So um, are there any changes this time around now that you guys are preparing to open up? 
We are limiting um, ourselves to a 50% occupancy. So normally we do about 20 to 25 people per group, but now we're limiting it to about 12 to 15 uh, so our guests can social distance. Uh, masks are required by all guests and employees to be worn on site. Um, and of course we have all the sanitation practices in place. Um, so we just want to be able to welcome everybody back safely and let them know that you know we are taking necessary precautions to right. keep everyone safe. And Baldassar's legacy lives on as the gardens still operate as a family-owned site for over a hundred years. Um, we are still family-owned and operated. We are not a state, even though we have historic uh, dedication and we are a historic landmark, we are still family-owned and operated. Um, it is Baldassar's nephew Rick Forestier. Um, he just passed away in December, but it's his children who actually run the gardens still. So um, I get the privilege of being the operations manager. Um, they come out and they visit and they are on site. They help out with all the restoration work, um, run the business. So it's um, we are still family owned. And a few reminders on how you can preserve the garden's rich history. Well, we do only do guided tours, um, mostly for that aspect. Our tour is also about two and a half acres. It takes about an hour to get through, so it's easy for people to get lost. Yeah. So we do everything by guided tour. Um, and that way also our guests can get the history of why it's a beautiful place yeah. but it's it means so much more when you actually know his story and why Baldessar did what he did and what techniques he used and um, his motivations so when our guests come out and they come out on tour um, you know you it's it is a bit of a history lesson but it's a story you're learning his history and you're learning about him as a person not just um, you know look at the rock look at the tree right we're just really happy to be back we're happy to be welcoming people back and um, Reservations can be made from our website um, or you can just give us a call.